Today's topic of discussion is uh, anti-anginal drug. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shanaz Malik and we are going to discuss anti-anginal drug. So what is ischemic heart disease? It is slowly progressive insufficiency of coronary circulation. It occurs maybe due to uh, atherosclerosis of the large epicardial coronary ar arteries. Pain occur due to imbalance between oxygen demand and oxygen supply in the ischemic area. Imbalance due to inability to meet the metabolic demand of myocardium may be due to fixed narrowing of the coronary arteries a or if vasospasm also occur angina may precipitate even at the lower for flow. Due to some coexisting condition like uh, anemia, hypoxia, hypertension and hyperthyroidism, the workload of the heart is increased and oxygen supply from the blood become deficient to sustain the metabolic need of myocardium. So, cellular viability of the heart is threatened and anginal symptoms may appear. So, silent myocardial ischemia is the episode of uh, ischemia occur without uh, uh, any pain, acute pain. It becomes more dangerous because the person has no forewarning of an anginal pain. Myocardial infarction is more dangerous or more serious than myocardial ischemia. Commonly, it is called heart attack. Now, infarction. The death of the tissue due to in interruption of the blood supply and it is irreversible. Causes of the infection may be thrombus or embolism. Thrombus is the stationary blood clot and embolism is the blood clot transported of the blood from other side to coronary vessels. The tissues distilled to obstruction dies and replaced by the non-contractile scar tissue. The heart muscle loses some of the strength and the after effect depend on the size and location of the infected area and beside damaging the normal heart tissue may disrupt the conducting may cause sudden death by triggering ventricular fibrillation. So here is the infected area. It is irreversible death of the heart muscle secondary to prolonged lack of oxygen supply. So, this is the infected area of the heart. So, how we can identify the heart attack? So, there are some criteria in ECG. So, we can see in ECG if uh, uh, IHT is manifested by the alteration in the direction of the repolarization. There is an elevation of ST segment in myocardial infarction and depression of ST segment when heart muscle receive insufficient oxygen supply. The T wave either get flattened in ischemic heart disease and presence of Q wave more than 0 0.04 second duration with depth greater than 25% of R wave amplitude the specific criteria for myocardial infarction. So here is the uh, normal ECG. This is the ST segment where as in the this, this is the MI patient ECG, ST segment elevated as MI patient. This is the ST segment which is elevated in MI patient and ST segment flatten, depressed and T wave inversion in myocardial ischemia. This is the T wave inversion and flatten of the ST segment in the myocardial ischemia and Q wave depth is more than 25% in R wave uh, as in it is in MI, myocardial infarction. Now types of the angina pectoris. There are three types of the angina pectoris according to symptom of the ischemic heart disease. First is the stable angina or classical angina. Chest pain associated with exercise. If we are uh, doing exercise and precipitate pain, it may, it may be due to stable angina. Another one is the unstable angina. Uh, at uh, this type of the angina precipitated at the rest, but patho pathophysiology is the rupture of atheromatous plaque and platelet deposition in the coronary vessel. And third one is the prince metal angina or variant angina. It also occurs at rest, but pathophysiology is due to spasm of the coronary arteries. So there are 
three type of the angina with various different pathophysiology. So in this figure, we can see that this is the normal blood vessel, normal person's blood vessel at rest. And after exercise, the blood vessels are dilated and increase the blood flow. This is the resistance vessel also uh, dilate and increase the blood flow. But in classical angina, there is atheromatous plaque, which reduces the blood flow again after it is not improving and this is the pathophysiology of classical angina this is atheromatous plaque and third one is the variant angina or prince metal angina this is normal vessel at rest but after attack spasm of the blood vessel so narrowing of the blood vessel and reduce the or hamper the blood supply to the myocardium now factor affecting coronary blood flow uh, and myocardial oxygen supply and demands are like coronary blood flow is only 4% of total cardiac output but oxygen extraction is 75% as compared to 25% in the systemic circulation. The coronary blood flow is facilitated by increased aortic diastolic pressure and decreased coronary aortic arteriolar pressure coronary flow occurred during diastole only and larger the diastole better the coronary blood flow on the counter uh, contrary an increase in ventricular pressure occurred in fiber rate contractility and heart size will increase the oxygen demand of myocardium the major determinant of coronary flow are the myocardial metabolic product which are generated locally due to ischemia. Whenever partial pressure of the arteries are pulled down, hypoxia occur and production of lactic acid, adenosine and prostaglandin and ultimately vasodilatation around the ischemic area and this is called compensatory mechanism. Now coronary steel phenomena. What is coronary steel phenomena? If other branches of the coronary vessel are normal and powerful arteriolar dilator is given, then arterioles of the normal vessel will be forcefully dilated and increase the blood flow through the well perfused area where it is not required at the cost of poorly perfused ischemic area where more blood is needed. In this figure, uh, this is the coronary vessel. This is the coronary of the without uh, arterial, di arterial dilator and this is with the arterial dilator. So in this figure, uh, atheromatous plaque is in the one branch of the coronary vessel other branches are normal so whenever atheromatous plaque is there and ischemia occur so collateral develop and dilatation of that um, blocked vessel uh, dilatation occur so increase the perfusion at the ischemic area but uh, in the whenever uh, strong dilator is given then normal vessel of coronary artery is dilated and increase the blood flow toward the normal area and it is stolen from the ischemic area so it is called uh, coronary steel phenomenon this is the pathophysiology of the angina it occurs due to imbalance between oxygen supply and oxygen demand of the myocardium so oxygen is decreased due to coronary atherosclerosis or coronary vasospasm or coronary thrombosis. So, uh, in this condition, decrease the oxygen supply and uh, oxygen supply is increased when increase the heart rate, ventricular hypertrophy, increase ventricular contractility and increase ventricular wall tension. Ultimately, increase the demand of the oxygen. 
so major question is how to treat angina so here is the game of demand and supply so in angina increase the demand of oxygen and reduce the supply of oxygen so we have to balance by improving oxygen supply and reduce the oxygen demand so how we can increase the oxygen supply so we can increase oxygen supply by if there is unstable angina then we can restore coronary blood flow by percutaneous intervention or stenting or coronary artery bypass or relieve vasospasm by giving drug like calcium channel blocker and nitrates and break the thrombi by using thrombolytic drug like uh, streptokinase and urokinase and further prevention of thrombus formation by using antiplatelet drug so this way we can improve the oxygen supply but how we can reduce the oxygen demand so we can uh, addition uh, we can introduce drug like um, nitrates to decrease preload of heart or decrease afterload of heart by giving calcium channel blocker and potassium channel opener or decrease heart rate by beta blocker now classification of anti anginal drug so first group is the nitrates it contain longer acting as well as shorter acting nitrates so shorter acting nitrates are like uh, glycerol trinitrate and isosorbate dinitrate these drug are given sublingually and they are shorter acting and used for the acute attack of the angina second group is the longer acting nitrates which contain isosorbate dinitrate and isosorbate mononitrate these drug are longer acting and given for the prophylactic purpose by oral route third group is calcium channel blocker drugs are verapamil deltiazem amlodipin these all drug are calcium channel blocker and act by calcium channel blocker and act on the heart as well as blood vessel third group is beta blocker which reduces the heart rate like uh, propranolol metoprolol and atenolol this drug reduces the heart rate now fourth group is potassium channel opener nicorandil which act on the blood vessel and relax the smooth muscle of the blood vessel and reduce the afterload other anti anginal drug like uh, trimetazidine rinolazine ivabridine and diperidamol these all are uh, other anti anginal drugs now uh, we will discuss about the nitrates so first nitrates are drug which reduces the preload which reduces preload and there are two type of the nitrates shorter acting and longer acting shorter acting nitrates are glycerol trinitrate and isosorbate dinitrate which are given by sublingual route in acute attack of migraine second group is longer acting drug like isosorbate dinitrate and isosorbate mononitrate these drug are useful for the prophylactic purpose and given by oral route now mechanism of action of nitrates whenever nitrates enter into the uh, vascular compartment there is nitrate receptors are present in the vascular smooth muscle these receptors possess self hydryl group which reduces nitrate into nitric oxide and convert to reactive nitrosothiol group this nitrosothiol group activate guanyl cyclase enzyme this nitrosothiol group will stimulate guanyl cyclase enzyme and increase the cyclic gmp in the um, smooth muscle and dephosphorylation of myosin light chain kinase and decrease calcium concentration in cytosol so in this both mechanism it relaxes the vascular smooth muscle and vasodilatation can occur this is the vascular smooth muscle cell so whenever nitrates enter into the cell uh, it convert into nitric oxide and nitric oxide stimulate guanyl cyclase enzyme and this guanyl cyclase enzyme will stimulate the cyclic gmp so increase the cyclic gmp in the cell so this cyclic gmp act on both side like it act on the myosin light chain as well as calcium channel so it inhibit the calcium law l type of calcium channel it block the 
टाइप ऑफ कैल्शियम चैनल एंड इनहिबिट द एंट्री ऑफ कैल्शियम इन द सेल एंड अदर मैकेनिज्म इट रिड्यूसेज द कैल्शियम रिलीज फ्रॉम द साइकोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम सो डिक्रीज द कैल्शियम कंसेंट्रेशन इन द सेल एंड अदर मैकेनिज्म इज द इट एक्टिवेट और सिमुलेट द डी फोस्फोराइलेशन ऑफ द माइसिन लाइट चेन एंड इनहिबिट माइसिन एंड एक्टिन फोस्फोराइलेशन एंड इनहिबिट द कॉन्ट्रक्शन कॉन्ट्रक्शन ऑफ स्मूथ मसल सो वाजो डायलेटेशन ऑफ रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ स्मूथ मसल अकर एंड वाजो डायलेटेशन अकर now pharmacological action of nitrates so nitrate is a prototype drug and uh, having no direct action on heart uh, it has uh, action on vascular smooth muscle so it quickly nitroglycerin quickly relieve the anginal pain by decreasing oxygen requirement and increase oxygen delivery to the myocardium second use is on the other smooth muscle smooth muscle of the bronchi esophagus biliary tract etc these all smooth muscle are relaxed by nitrates so now effect of nitrates on vascular smooth muscle so first of all uh, vasodilatation occur so predominant this is the vasodilatation is the predominant effect on the blood vessel so peripheral pulling of blood occur and decrease venous return to the heart decrease preload and decrease left and right and diastolic ventricular volume decrease cardiac work and decrease oxygen requirement of myocardium and decrease oxygen demand so this is the first mechanism another one is the it is a arterial dilator reduce peripheral vascular resistance and decrease afterload third is the dilatation of large coronary vessel and collateral and increase blood flow to ischemic area due to redistribution of coronary blood flow and increase oxygen delivery to ischemic area and all this mechanism causes relieve the anginal pain ultimately target is a relief in anginal pain and it is fulfilled by nitrates now pharmacokinetics of nitrates so organic nitrates are absorbed through the buccal mucosa uh, skin and intestinal tract and all nitrates except isosorbate mononitrate undergoes extensive first pass metabolism oral uh, bioavailability of nitrates is very low and sublingual route is onset is 2 to 5 minute and it is very shorter duration of action so it can be used in, in the acute attack of angina it absorbed through skin it is very slowly and dermal route is used for the prolonged uh, effect and it can be used in for the prophylactic purpose and metabolites are excreted mainly in urine as glucuronyl derivatives so adverse effect of nitrates are due to extensive vasodilatation all uh, side effect uh, depend on the Uh, according to vasodilatation like uh, headache postural hypotension tachycardia palpitation weakness flushing and rarely syncopal attacks can occur and these all side effect can be uh, reduced or it can be avoided by uh, after uh, relieving the pain the drug should be spit out from the mouth so after relieving the pain drug should be spit out or uh, swallow to the Uh, uh from the mouth so it's a uh, first pass metabolism is very high so it can uh, metabolize in from the gi tract and uh, overdose can cause methemoglobinemia now major drawback of um, nitrates is tolerance tolerance to nitrates develop on prolonged use of uh, nitrates orally transdermally or intravenously tolerance development is rare with intermittent exposure like sublingual glycerol trinitrate and what are the mechanism of tolerance so it, uh, this is the mechanism like decrease nitric oxide generation depletion of self hydryl radical in the cell or generation of free radical so this is these are the mechanism for the development of tolerance in nitrates and it can be prevented by giving drug free interval of 8 to 10 hours 
Now, isosorbate dinitrate is used for the acute attack of angina by sublingual route and it is used for the prophylactic purpose for, by oral route. So, its bioavailability is very low because its first pass metabolism is very high. And isosorbate mononitrate is uh, used for the chronic attack because it has longer duration of action as well as higher oral bioavailability and doesn't go under first pass metabolism. Now, therapeutic uses of nitrates. First use is for the acute attack of angina. Uh, nitroglycerin is drug of choice for acute attack of angina. Sublingual nitroglycerin 0.5 mg relieve the pain within 2 to 5 minutes, 2 to 3 minutes. Uh, patient uh, should ask to spit out the drug or swallow the drug. So, uh, so we can avoid the side effect like hypotension and headache. If the pain is not relieved, the other tablet uh, in interval of the 5 minutes can be given. Within 15 minutes, we can give 3 tablets. Nitroglycerin uh, buckle spray also uh, can be useful in the acute attack of angina. For prophylaxis of classical angina, longer acting nitrate preparation like isosorbate mononitrate or isosorbate dinitrate orally can be given and sustained release preparation or ointment or patch can be given. It decreases the frequency of attack and improve exercise tolerance. Uh, Sublingual nitrate can be given prophylactic, prophylactically before the exercise or stress test. Now transdermal nitroglycerin produce prolonged effect up to 24 hours. Oral nitrates are useful for long-term prophylaxis of angina. The main disadvantage of uh, nitrates is development of tolerance and it can be minimized by drug-free interval of 8 to 10 hours. Now, use of nitrates in variant or principal angina. This type of angina is usually due to coronary vasospasm. Episode of coronary vasospasm are treated with nitrates, uh, prophylaxis and nitrates with calcium channel blocker like uh, amlodipine, nifedipine, SR and deltiazim are effective. Addition of calcium channel blocker with nitrate produce better efficacy in variant angina and also reduces the incidence of myocardial infarction. Now treatment of unstable angina, it required multiple drugs because a pathophysiology of unstable angina is atheromatous plaque. So we have to treat atheromatous plaque first. So antiplatelet drug like low dose aspirin, clopidogrel, presugrel or glycoprotein 2b3, a receptor antagonist drug should be added in the treatment. Anticoagulant like low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin or fondaparinux should be included. Nitrates like nitroglycerin sublingually it is use, usually effective intravenous nitroglycerin is administered if pain is persistent or recur nitrates reduce myocardial oxygen consumption and relieve coronary, coronary vasospasm beta blocker like atenolol and metoprolol are routinely administered in unstable angina unless it is contraindicated Calcium channel blocker like amlodipine, nifedipine, sustained preparation, diltiazim or verapamil are used in symptomat uh, symptoms persistent patient uh, on nitrate or beta blocker or if beta blocker are contraindicated then we can introduce calcium channel blocker with nitrates. Statin they have been shown to improve outcome in the unstable angina. Now, use of uh, nitrates in myocardial infarction for management of acute attack of myocardial infarction, intravenous infusion of nitroglycerin is useful for persistent and recurrent ischemic pain and treatment of left, left ventricular failure. It should be avoided in uh, patient of uh, hypotension and in patient who received sildenafil or tadalafil. Uh, within 42 or 24 hours. Other uses are like uh, uh, congestive heart failure. The role of nitrate in congestive heart failure is intravenous infusion of nitroglycerin is used mainly in acute heart failure and monitoring of blood pressure is ne necessary to avoid hypotension and 
headache is the limit of nitrates. Hypertensive emergency intravenous infusion of nitroglycerin is used because rapid onset of action and uh, disadvantage is uh, uh, development of tolerance. Other uses of nitrates are like biliary colic. Uh, sublingual nitroglycerin can be given to relieve the biliary spasm and associated pain. And in cyanide poisoning, a cyanide inhibit the cytochrome oxidase enzyme and prevent oxygen utilization by cell. So, in cyanide poisoning, nitrates can be used. In cyanide poisoning, cyanide bind with cytochrome oxidase enzyme and prevent oxygen utilization of cell and hypoxia of cell can occur. So, if we are introduced amyl nitrate to sodium nitrate, uh, so this cyanide uh, bind with methemoglobin and this methemoglobin convert into cyanomethemoglobin and this cyanomethemoglobin uh, in presence of IV sodium thiosulfate convert into sodium thiocyanate and excreted in urine. Now treatment of angina will continue in second part of treatment of angina. So we'll stop here. Thank you for watching the video.